Dayton is here. Pentatonic scales, shapes number five and one. Free tabs in the comment section for everybody. If you like those tabs, think about becoming a Patreon. Subscribe if you haven't, and let's do it. Grab the ukulele brain attention span. Follow me on in and let's break it down. So we're just going to go ahead and jump into this one. I have a massive headache, so I apologize if I feel like I'm the energy's not there. But I'm going to get it done, get the important information, then I'm going to go take a nap. Okay, shape number one. Even though I have a high G and I don't really use the high G, I want to teach it to you in case you're using a low G or maybe even following along with the baritone in the key of A. Shape number five is two five, two five, three five, three five. What's nice about that one is five, 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 right? And this is a D note here. You can use this root note, or this is a D note here to help you build these shapes. Find this one. You know you're gonna use all those. Five, three, five, three, five, two, five, two. Now that's Shape. the pentatonic scale. Remember, if we want to turn this into the blues scale, we have to play the fat flat fifth. The flat fifth is between the A and the G notes. A is your five chord, G is your four chord. That's the easy way to know that. Do, that's an A note right there, but it's going past the G note. G, there's the blues note. So the blues scale is two, five, two, five, three, four, five, three, five. Shape number one is kind of a mirror image of this. It's three, five, three, five. I'm sorry, not three, five, five, seven, five, seven, five, eight, five, eight. So here we skip two frets, skip two frets, skip one fret, skip one fret. And then in this shape, we skip one fret, skip one fret, skip two frets, skip two frets. So okay, again, let's make this shape one. We'll turn it into the blue scale. Where do we find our G note? Right here. So adding the blues note would be Five seven five seven eight five eight five eight. All right, so let's turn these into music. So those are the two shapes. Let's go ahead and look at some licks that we're going to do. For your submission, feel free to play what I play or feel free to create your own licks entirely. It's all good. Okay, so. Let's take a look at the first lick we're gonna play over measures three and four. If you're wondering why we're always doing these licks over three and four, that's not by accident. Usually the vocal melody is on measures one and two. Ten thumbs blues, challenges going real well. So that's why we're targeting these measures specifically because in your own playing, that's where you're gonna put them. Okay, so the first two measure lick sounds like this. Okay, slide to three from three to five. This is an A note. That's significant because it is a chord tone of the key of D. In fact, it's the fifth interval, making it nice and neutral. It's a very safe spot to be in the key of D. Then we're gonna go from there to three, back to five, back to three. One and two and three, four and. One and two and three and four and. So you're gonna give this, it's not really res resolution, but you're gonna pause on this one, almost making it a two part lick. One and two and three and four and one. You'll play it again on the and after the four then come down here to the fifth fret of the E string on the one. This is a pretty basic second half. One and two and three, four. One and two and three, four. In general, I think sometimes when we're using these scales, one thing that we forget is that we can play the same note two times in a row, three times in a row, four times in a row. It's totally fine. In fact, it sounds really nice. A lot of the reasons it sounds your playing sounds like a scale and not like music is because you're constantly changing the notes. When real musicians, repeat notes vocally. And a good solo can sound vocal, like you can hum it or you can sing it. A good way to do that is repeating notes. So this lick, nice and slow. 
One and two and three, four and one and two and three, four. Very nice. Then measures five, six, seven and eight. Okay, and this one is in shape number one. Now, another thing that we tend to do when we're using these shapes is we tend to just play the scale in order. And sometimes that works, but it also helps to play these kind of notes out of order. So we're gonna start off and play five, eight, seven, five. One and two and. From there, back to the eight, back to five, back to seven. One and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. One, two and. Another technique to give your scales a vocal quality is large leaps. Playing one note and then skipping a lot of notes. And that's what we did here from seven to five. This five is also our D note. So we're resolving our solo. You want your, <clears throat> you want the last note of your solo to be your root note. If you want your solo to sound resolved at least. So these two measures, nice and slow. One and two and three and four. One, two and three, four. Okay, take your time with these licks. And again, also feel free to make your own. Let's take a look at the turnaround. Over the A, we're in shape number five. One and two and three, four. I'm focusing on this A note because I'm playing this idea over the A7. One and two and three, four. One trick is for the turnaround while you're soloing over the A note, highlight the A over the A chord, highlight the A note, over the G chord, highlight the G note. In terms of keyless soloing, you would say over the five chord, highlight the root, over the four chord, highlight the root. When it goes to G, we return to the shape that we've been doing already, right? When it returns to G, we return to the shape four that we already know. And it's gonna highlight that G note, like I said. It's gonna go three, one, three, three. One and two, three, four. So these two notes are these two measures together. One and two and three, four. One and two and three, four, one. And now we're also mixing up the turnaround a little bit. We've been doing descending turnarounds with the pitch going down. You can also do them ascending, which is a really nice sound. So we play the second fret, and we reverse this turnaround we've already done. Second fret with an open A, first fret, second fret, two and three. Then we make that A7 shape that we know, four, three, four, but up a half fret, five, four, five, and then down to four, three, four. One two and three and four and one two and three four and that's the last four measures so let's go ahead and put this together from the top and play it together nice and slow i'm going to go ahead and play through one time counting the licks out and then i'm going to play through one more time without counting so you can do both all right all right so let's take it from the top the strum pattern by the way for both d7 and g7 is going to be down down up up down so here we go one two Three, four, one, two, and, and four. One, two, and, and four. One, and two, and three, four. And one, and two, and three, four. One, two, and, and four. One, two, and, and four. One, and two, and three, and four. One, two, and, three, four. One, and two, and three, four. One, and two, three, four. One, Two and three and four and one, two and three, four.
Very, very cool. Again, feel free to come up with your own ideas with those shapes as well. You could even just do a whole solo for a backing track if you wanted to. And there you have it, friends and family. Now you have two more scale shapes to add to your repertoire. And that covers most of the fretboard at this point. We're all the way down to the eighth fret on the fretboard, which is really, when most ukuleles, the quality of the sound you're gonna get from eight up kind of depends on the quality of the ukulele. My flight sounds great, but I've also played ukuleles that don't really have any sustain past the seventh fret. So this is great to play soprano, tenor, any size ukulele you can shred with these concepts, all right? Okay, see you in two days for the next lesson. You're doing great.